Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this particular video, we will talk about ROC and AUC curve. In the last video, if you remember, I have already talked about the confusion matrix, precision, recall, accuracy, F1 score. And we have seen that at what point of time, which particular performance matrix is highly important to recognize, right? I hope that that picture is pretty much clear to everyone because that is the major prerequisite to understand this particular session. So if you haven't watched the prerequisite video yet, I would highly request everyone to first of all go and watch that video where I have talked about the confusion matrix understanding. That's the last video only on my YouTube channel. And after that, come towards this video and watch the video until the very end. This concept is highly important. Whenever we are talking about any classification based problem, a lot of healthcare domain problems, financial domain problem, where, wherever we are talking about, you know, classification tasks, we used to create this ROC and AUC curve to determine that whether our model is performing well or not. So what is this curve all about? I will talk about all those stuffs in the today's session. Now let's get started. Whenever I'm talking about this curve, with respect to ROC curve, it's a curve between the FPR and TPR. So if you will observe that it's a curve where we will be having FPR in the x-axis, FPR full form is false positive rate and TPR is something which I have as true positive rate. Okay, this is a kind of a curve which we have FPR versus TPR. True positive rate and the false positive rate. Now you will definitely ask me that what is this false positive rate all about? I hope you all remember the confusion matrix which I have talked about in my previous video. Let me try to create it again. For example, here I will be having 0 and I will be having 1. This is something which I will be having as maybe the actual values. Okay. And then on the, you know, uh, left hand side, I will be having again 0 and 1. And suppose this is something which I have is the predicted values. So here I will be having the actual values and the predicted values. I told you, right, when the actual is zero and the predicted is also zero, this is something which we called as true negative. Do you remember? What is the value? Negative. Is this true or false? It's true. So it is something which we called as true negative. Now, when the actual is one, but the predicted is false, so it is something which is negative and it is false negative. I hope you all remember these terms which I have already been covered up in very detail in, the, in detail in the last video. After that again this is something which I am getting as positive but it's false positive because the actual value is 0 but the prediction is 1. Similarly here if you will see the actual is 1 and the prediction is also we are getting as 1. So it, it is something which I am getting as true positive. So now here if I will talk about what is true positive rate, I hope you all remember the concept of recall that we have covered up in the last video. To, so when I'm saying true positive rate, true positive rate is nothing but here I am mentioning about the recall only, which is equals to what is the true positive, what is the true positive divided by how many actual positives are there, which is nothing but true positive plus false negative. Similarly, when I will talk about what is false positive rate, it is nothing but how many false positive are there out of actual false positive, out of actual false positive, out of actual positives, uh, negatives. So here if you will see, this is something which I will take under the consideration. These are the false values, right? This is the negative values that I have actually, right? So it is something which is equals to false positive divided by false positive plus two negative. So I hope this part is pretty much clear to everyone. First of all, what, what do we mean by true positive rate and what do you mean by false positive rate? So whenever I am trying to calculate what is true positive rate, it means how many true positives are there out of actual positives, out of actual positives. So, so it's a summation of this stuff. When I'm saying false positive rate, then how many false positives are there out of actual negatives? I hope this part is pretty much clear to everyone. Now, what usually happens is that Suppose I will be having some data where I will be having the actual value, which is y. I will be having the predicted value, which is the probability, which is the probability of my model to give the uh, predictions of yes or no. So for example, here, uh, you know, in actual data for the records, the value, the predictions are like, this is, these are the actual predictions, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. 
Suppose the predicted probabilities are 0 0.7972, you know, 0 0.49. I'm just randomly writing any of the number 0 0.15. So this is something which is a probability. Now what usually happen is that we usually have a term called threshold. What is the meaning of threshold? Threshold is something which is starting from maybe 0, then maybe I am saying 0 0.2 is the threshold, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and then 1.0. Threshold indicates that when I am saying threshold for 0, so this with the help of this threshold term, I will be able to convert my actual value to 0 and 1. How? I will say that whatsoever probability is bigger than 0, denote it as 1. Whichever probability is bigger than the threshold, I will denote it as 1. Lesser than or equal to, I will denote it as 0. So, if you will see here, for 0, is there any probability which is less than 0? No, right? So, all the terms will be 1 only. If suppose I will say what is the y cap for 0 0.2. So, now check what are the values which are less than or equal to 0 0.2. I hope this is the something which is where the value will be 0 and this is also where value will be 0. But remaining terms are bigger than 0 0.2. So, I am marking it as 1 only. So, what I am saying is that I am saying one simple thing. For the bigger value of threshold, so whichever term or whichever probability in your y cap is bigger than the threshold, is bigger than the threshold, I will mark it as 1. I will mark that y cap as 1. Whichever is having less than or equal to threshold, do one thing, just mark it as 0. Just mark it as 0. So now, this is how basically the prediction will be done internally whenever we are, you know, calling any of the model, right? So on the basis of the predictions, on the basis of the threshold, your predictions may vary. For example, when threshold is 0 0.2, at that point of time, your prediction is different. When the th threshold is 0, at that point of time, your prediction is different. When I will say the threshold is 0 0.4, so it means that for the values which are less than or equal to 0 0.4, the value will be 0. So, here you can see that here it will be 0, here also it will be 0, here also it will be 0. But for the remaining values, it is bigger than 0.4, so I will mark it as 1 only. Now, for all the different values, for example, for 0, for 0 0.2, for 0 0.4, then for 0 0.6, for 0 0.8, for 1.0, you will evaluate two terms. Those two terms are TPR and FPR. Now, for every particular threshold, starting from 0, then 0 0.2, then 0 0.4, then 0 0.6, then 0 0.8, then 1.0. Similarly, here also there will be a marking term. What I am saying? That for every particular threshold that you have, you will be having two values. What is TPR? What is FPR? For example, if we will take for maybe 0 0.2. If I will say for 0 0.2, can, can you tell me what is TPR? What is F FPR? So for 0 0.2, what is TPR? You we have to see what is how many true positives are there. What is the meaning of true positive? Actual is also one and predicted is also one. So one is there then I believe 2 is there. I think there are two, 2 positives because remaining are nothing, there is nothing I can see. So, how many true positives are there? 2 divided by true positives are 2 only plus how many false negatives are there? How many false negatives are there? Now, what is the meaning of false negative? Meaning of false negative is actually the value is 1 but the prediction says that it is 0. So, just check the prediction as 0 but actually it is 1. Can I say it is 1? Pred prediction is 0, but actually it is 1. 2. So, it means that I will be having two false negatives. So, if you know the meaning of, what is the meaning of false negative, you will be easily able to determine. See, the false negative meaning, prediction is 0, but actually the out, the target is 1. Actually, it, it is 1, but the prediction is 0. So, you can see the same phenomena is happening here for 0 0.2. Same phenomena is happening here. Prediction is 0, but the actual it is 1. Prediction is 0, the actual it is 1. Make sense? So, here I will be able to determine that my TPR for the Y cap as 0 0.2 as the threshold is 2 by 4. Right? 2 by 4, which is nothing but 1 by 2, which is nothing but 0 0.5. So, I have that value of TPR. 
Now I need to calculate what is the value of FPR. What is the value of FPR? So how will we calculate? Now we need to determine what is false positive. What is false positive? So what is the meaning of false positive by the way? Prediction says 1 but actually it is 0. Prediction says it is 1 but actually it is 0. So let's see. Prediction says 1 but actually it is 0. So I find out 1. 1 is the right. So one record I will be able to find out like this. Similarly, prediction says 1 but actually it is 0. This is the second record which I will be able to find out. I hope you can see my screen very much clearly. This one I am talking about. This is the second record. Third record is this one. Prediction says 1 but actually it is 0. So in total we will be having 3 records if I am not wrong. So 3 divided by 3 plus false positive divided by false positive plus true negative. What is the meaning of true negative? Let me remove these things. So that we will be able to see the clear picture. Two negative, uh, two negative meaning actually it is zero and prediction is also saying zero. So see, is there any two negative here? Actually it is zero. Prediction is saying zero. No, I don't think so. So here I will be able to get as zero. So my output will be one. Three by three is equals to one. So what I'm saying is that here we have calculated for y cap as zero point two. What is the value of TPR and FPR? Similarly, what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to calculate for the y cap equals to 0 0.4, what is the value of, you know, TPR and FPR, just like the way I have talked about just now. Similarly, when y cap is equals to 0 0.6, we need to calculate what is the value of TPR and what is the value of FPR. Similarly, when the y cap is equals to, you know, 0 0.8, we need to calculate again these two values, which is TPR and FPR. Similarly, when I am saying what is the value when y cap is equals to 1.0, what is the value of TPR and FPR, right? For every particular threshold that I have, I need to calculate these two values. Once I will be having all the values, what I will do is that I will try to plot those values in, the, in this curve. For example, maybe at 0 0.2, there is a dot here, then there is a dot here. I am just randomly plotting it. There is a dot here, then there is a dot here, then maybe here. So what you are saying is you need to combine all these dots right like this like this maybe you will be able to get this kind of a curve and there is a in between line like this okay now this is what usually you will see as this curve so this is a midline which i am plotting now this is something which you call as a, as a roc curve it's a plot between the value of false positive rate and true positive rate with a varying threshold that we have. So for every different threshold, what I did is that I have calculated the value of TPR and FPR. I recognize those points. I joined all those points. And what is this AUC? Area under the curve. So what I will do is that I will try to calculate. I will try to calculate what is this area under this curve. So what I will do is that. So for this particular value so suppose this is something which is there as maybe 1.0 okay and what i will do is that i'll try, try to calculate what is the area under this particular sp space that i have here and what i really want is i really want this particular area to be bigger than this middle line if you will see here the space which is there under this ROC curve is bigger than this particular middle line that I have. I hope you can see this middle line is here. So this is the middle line which I have plotted, right? What I'm saying is that our space, our AUC area should be bigger than that. Higher the AUC means your model is performing pretty well. Now, depending upon different kind of situations, depending upon what kind of circum circumstances you are trying to solve, what kind of scenarios you are trying to solve, your value of threshold will vary. For example, I will talk about similar similarly to the healthcare domain. In the last video we have seen in the healthcare domain, our main focus is to talk about TPR. Our main focus is to focus on something called as recall. So what I, I will really focus with, with, the, with, with this curve that wherever the value of TPR is bigger, maybe, uh, maybe suppose this is the value where my TPR is higher, maybe where my TPR is higher. I'm just considering it. Okay. I'm not going with the exact numbers here, but I just want to explain you the concept behind that. That 
it depends on the different situations for example i am solving one problem where i want to detect the diabetes detection just like the previous example right diabetes prediction that whether a person is diabetic or not in this case when i am solving this healthcare problem what i really want is i really want to focus on tpr i really want to focus on recall i really want to focus on the accuracy or accurate values of tpr so at that point of situation maybe i'll take a higher threshold right rather than compromising on a lower threshold means what i'm saying is with by plotting this curve i will be easily able to see the factors that okay what situation i am solving what circumstances i am really talking about what scenarios i am solving on the basis of that i will be able to determine and i will try to you know modify my code in such a way that i will write that okay this is the threshold threshold which i am really focusing on right whether you are focusing on tpr or you are focusing on fpr or you want to focus on both you can just clearly able to see that by the just by using this curve right for example you you are saying that i i really want to focus on both the aspects i want that tpr and fpr should be of similar value i really want tpr should be high fpr i don't care so depending on these different situations your threshold will vary right by default it will be 0.5 in logistic regression and you will see that you you used to use that sigmoid function where well the, if the value is bigger than 0.5 automatically you will be able to get that value as 1 otherwise 0 the prediction you will be able to get but actually that that sigmoid function will be able to give us the probability and after that we are applying that threshold function where we are saying that if the value is bigger than 0.5 give me the value as 1 similarly here also what i am saying is what we are doing is we are just varying varying that thresholds so that we will be able to see that at what point of time at what point of situation we should use what kind of threshold right this is what all about which i really want to talk about in this particular session regarding the roc and auc curve this is something that we called as roc curve roc and auc curve so now you can go and just you know try to see the explanation in whatsoever uh, web platform you really want to see try to see that whatever explanation i gave to you is that really making sense to everyone or not now because i have seen that, the, that there are a lot of people who are really confused about this particular curve but this is something which is really really important at least whenever you are doing any kind of a project with respect to specific domains at that point of time this plays a very important role right so if you have any sort of doubt do let me know in the comment section i will for sure try to see all the comments and try to try to resolve all your doubts as soon as possible with this i would like to end this particular session i hope that you really find these sessions very insightful if you do please hit like button share the video with everyone do subscribe to my channel it would really mean the world to me and with this bye bye everyone happy learning to all and i'll see you all in my next upcoming videos